Hi everyone and welcome to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie, I am Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok. And today we've got a regular podcast episode with a finished object. I'm excited to be here today uh, filming this episode for you and we're just gonna dive right in so Dun -dun -dun -dun. this is my <clears throat> excuse me <coughs> went to a neighbor's house last night and has some wine so <laughs> my voice is a little Ugh. but this is my finished Cathedral Pullover by Claudia Quintanilla of Unit Toronto and guys it's done. I'm not wearing it today because it's it's already 74 degrees outside. It's gonna be really really hot. It's like 8 30 a.m. and it, this is a worsted weight like wool sweater. So I'm sorry, it's summer. <laughs> I'm not putting it on, but I will have a photo up here the whole time I'm talking about it so you can see what it looks like on me, and uh, I think I only have a photo of it on me. I don't think I have a photo of it like laying flat, but <sighs> where to start? Where to start? I can, I can kind of drape it over me this way. I don't think this is useful at all. There we go. Isn't the lace section just like, it's really gorgeous. It really is. Um, let me tell you, the yarn that I use for this is the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the colorway Nordic Beach. Um, as I mentioned, it's their worsted weight base and it is a non-superwash merino wool. I knit, let me get my notes here. I knit this size extra large. I know I've mentioned this, um, but since this is the finished object podcast, I will walk you through like everything related to this sweater. So I did knit the size extra large for about nine inches of positive ease. So typically I would have knit the sides large for my bust size. Um, and based on the amount of positive ease, that's actually recommended in the pattern. When I was looking at the schematics and the other measurements for the pattern, um, I looked at the bicep circumference and I was like, oh, this bicep circumference for the size large, I think it's going to be too small for me. And I didn't really feel like fiddling with the stitch counts for the sleeve and the body sizes um, because of the way this is knit and because of the lace yoke. I really didn't want to mess up, you know, and have the wrong number of stitches so that my stitch repeats were like off because this is a pretty complicated lace, lace yoke at least for me because I've, I don't really do very many lace yokes so ultimately I decided to size up to the extra large um, I don't know if you're able to tell from the photo but it does give me a pretty oversized fit which I don't think is bad. I don't think it's a problem. The only thing that I need to figure out is the neckline. I think the neckline is like way too big when I put this on. Here, you know what? I can, I can just pop this on to show you what the neckline looks like. You will clearly be able to see my tank top underneath it, um, but that'll kind of show you what's going on here. So, <laughs> okay, I got the pups here too. Um, you can see my tank top and then there's even more skin showing outside of it. So, and like, here's the edge of my shoulder. It's like wide. And I mean, it's not necessarily the pattern's fault. The pattern told me to knit the size large and I was like, ah, I'm gonna knit the size extra large. So that's what it is. But I think I can crochet some elastic on the inside and try to bring it in a little bit more. I think that would really help. Um, the only problem then is 
I just worry about the lace panel like puckering a little bit up here at the top but I think it would be worth it to have the neckline come in a little bit more so um, that's like overall fit um, the length the width of the body the length of the sleeves guys I knit the sleeves full length you should be proud of me um, that's all good and I actually think the oversized fit in the body is like gonna be really like comfy cozy in fall and winter so that piece I'm not worried about it's really just the neckline that I think I need to bring in a little bit so okay it's coming off it's hot too hot too hot what Rocky found a sock now they're gonna fight over it so let me talk to you about the construction of this because I think that's like the biggest piece for me that was like different about this knit um, this is a bottom-up knit and my very first like gut reaction to this was oh no I don't like bottom-up knits but then I stopped and I thought about it for a couple minutes and I was like, you know what, maybe this won't be so bad. It actually has you start with the sleeves, which like obviously you can choose to start with the body if you want and then do the sleeves and then do the yoke, like the order in which you do them and doesn't really matter. But it recommends that you start with the sleeves and I was like, okay, I can knit sleeves relatively quickly, so maybe that'll be fine to get them done and out of the way first. And then it tells you to knit the body, again, bottom up. And I was like, okay, well, that'll kind of be a lot of knitting, but I can read on my Kindle while I'm knitting all of the stockinette, and it should be fine. It should, like, pass by relatively smoothly. And then you join... The arms onto the body and you've got everything connected and then you knit the yoke and I was like okay that's gonna be the most interesting part because it's the twisted rib lace yoke section and at least we're saving like the most interesting piece for last um, and that was my thought and in practice in actually knitting this um, I would say at least one of those sections <laughs> my thought was accurate um, and that was the body piece so for the sleeves I actually started with I don't know if you can still see it anymore after I blocked it uh, a little bit but not really I don't know if you can see it on camera there's a little bit of a line right here it blocked out really nicely but I started with a provisional cast on right here because this was the amount of stitches that the size extra large told you to cast on. So you cast on here, you do all the increases until you get to the last increase and it says to, you know, stop increasing but you still need to knit whatever, however many inches until you get the full length of the sleeve. And as I was <laughs> weirdly like trying on the sleeve, it's hard to know like where the end of the sleeve is going to be, like where it's going to connect to the body and where that's going to sit in your like arm area, right? Um, but I was thinking and trying to figure this out and I was like, okay, I think this point right here is still gonna be too many stitches for like my wrist area so what I actually did was because the pattern said you know you need to add well the, I don't remember if it was like five or six more inches um, I actually added a few of those inches down here at the bottom of the sleeve instead of at the top of the sleeve and I'm really glad I did that because um, the sleeve now I think fits really well especially down here at my wrist um, so it's like fitted you know a little bit extra room but that's how that's how I like the sleeves so like not an issue at all so I was really glad that I did that um, the body piece like I said smooth sailing I did a lot of reading while I was knitting the stockinette body um, which is one of my favorite activities to do. I find now that if I'm doing just like plain stockinette and watching TV, I'm like, 
I get bored. <laughs> and sometimes I'll just put it down and pick up my phone and I'm like, oh gosh. So now when I do stockinette, I have to read because I guess that takes up more of my like brain power energy where I'm not thinking about, oh, I'm only knitting stockinette. Um, I don't know. It's just a weird thing that I've been noticing lately. And then I got to the part where you join the sleeves with the body. And again, I mentioned this is something that I've never done before. So I don't know if I did it right. I feel like I followed the instructions in the pattern. Um, but the pattern tells you to like leave like eight stitches or so from the body like out of like when you join everything it says to put them on hold but it doesn't tell you to put any of the sleeve stitches on hold so when you come back at the end it says to like Kitchener or graft those body stitches to the sleeve but there weren't like two sets of stitches to match it up to. So I don't know if I did that wrong, if I was supposed to leave some of the sleeve stitches off so that I could graft them together, but I just kind of sewed it down and figured it out, and I mean, ultimately I think it's fine. Um, if anyone's really looking at your armpit, and the little holes in your sweater then like whatever I did my best to um, you know just sew it down as much as I could so I think that it's fine ultimately um, and then came the yoke which I was like really excited to start I was like oh this is gonna be fun it's different it's like you know a new stitch pattern and what I didn't realize is that like in each of these little sections you're actually increasing stitches until you get to the top and to the next section and so I thought the whole time we would be decreasing as we go up but it's actually like increase and then like rapid decrease increase rapid decrease increase rapid so it's like it constantly feels like you're having more stitches on the needles which is just kind of a slog. And then there's a couple of these lace charts that are repeated. Um, and so I, w I was so close. I felt like I was so close to being done when I was like on one of these last ones. And then the instructions were like, repeat the lace chart. And I was like, no, <laughs> I just want to be done. I don't want to repeat these like 10 rows or whatever it was. Um, but we did it finally and I'm really proud of it. Um, the ribbing all the way around the sweater on all of the ribbing sections is um, one by two, so one twisted rib and two pearls. And I thought this was really weird, especially like starting out on the sleeves and on the body. And initially I wanted to change it to just one by one, but I realized that the one by two follows exactly the like stitch pattern um, in the lace section so you can see all of the knit rows line up with you know these lines all the way up here so I knew that I couldn't change that at the top I mean I could have but I feel like it looks better like this and so because of that I also didn't change it on the bottom although you pro people probably wouldn't have noticed if you had done like one by two at the top and one by one everywhere else but just for consistency I decided to keep it so let's see um I think that's all my notes on this it is a worsted weight sweater and I don't have very many worsted weight sweaters in my sweater collection. Um, I do think the gauge on this though is a little tight. Like the fabric just in general feels a little bit dense. And if I make, or when I make, because I know I've got a couple more worsted weight sweaters uh, in my queue for this year, and I really just want to watch the gauge that the fabric is making and the density um, because I feel like there's an opportunity for 
I mean, I guess the point of a worsted weight sweater is like for it to be kind of dense so that you're like really, really warm. But I guess I would like the opportunity for it to be not super dense and like have a little bit of drape. This like doesn't really have much drape at all. It's kind of just like <laughs> a, a chunk of fabric. So I don't know, that's just something for me to keep in mind for my future worsted weight sweaters. I would have thought the needle size would have been bigger because the needle size that I used was like a 5mm and a 4.5, which is like I can use that with DK weight, you know, so. But yeah, um, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. I knit this as part of a knit along with You Knit Toronto um, for the new book that they had put out called Making Memories, Timeless Knits for Children. Um, there is a child's version of this pattern as well as this adult version and they asked me if I would like to participate in the knit along and I said yes. So they kindly sent me the yarn to knit this um, and I did and I'm happy that it's done now. I'm happy that I knit it, I'm happy that I participated, and I'm happy that it's done now so that I can focus more on some summer knits. Because as I said, it's starting to get hot and um, I was kind of just done with a worsted weight sweater right now. Although, <laughs> Ireland's coming up so I'm going to be knitting a couple more worsted weight sweaters before we go to Ireland. Um, I didn't mean for them to be worsted weight patterns, but the patterns that I picked just happened to be worsted weight that I would like to take because they're like cable-y and, you know, Ireland-y, <laughs> if that's a word. Um, okay, so what do I have for you next? Let's see. I'm going to give you a quick update on my season's cardigan. I showed this to you last week. Um... I think I put on a couple more rows on it, so you probably can't even really tell. But I, I'm halfway through the decreases. I think I need to do like eight sleeve decreases, and I've done four. So really um, just chugging away. There's like so much dog hair in the armpit of this cardigan. I don't know why. Um, so that's it. I, this is my Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta. The yarn that I'm using for this is the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the colorway called Oatmeal. Yes, it is the same yarn in a different color that I used for the Cathedral Pullover. <sighs> different color, but like, really? Is this a different color? I ask myself every day. It's very similar. So, okay. The most exciting updates, I have two more things to show you. I have made progress on my Oslo hat. I officially folded the brim the other day and I did the turn and I'm working away on the body of the hat. So I'm at the stage where things start to pick up a little bit. If you've knit the Oslo hat, I feel like the brim takes the longest and you're just knitting and knitting and knitting and then finally you get to join it in, um, where you knit, you knit like the next row with the cast on row to make this double folded brim and that's honestly the best part. It feels like you're flying after that. So I'm really excited on the progress that I'm making on this. Um, this is the Oslo hat by Petite Knit and the yarn that I'm using for this is Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light in the colorway Bon Air. So that's that and I have one more update for you. I cast on a brand new project. So I'm going to be making the Ingrid Top by Gregoria Fibers and the yarn that I'm going to use for this is Terrapin Fiberworks 
and this is on her Deer Creek Fingering Base, which is a 60% cotton, 40% linen, um, and in the colorway called Hearts Core. And it looks like this. One of my red colors from my most recent <laughs> yarn haul. Um, and I did a swatch. So here's what the swatch looks like. I know it kind of clashes with the pink that I'm wearing right now. So here's the swatch. But the main like focus of this pattern are these eyelet details that are, you know, every however many rows they are. Um, and it's a tank top pattern. So I need to preface all of this by saying, well, a few things. Um, first, this is not a fingering weight pattern, and I am using, attempting to use, fingering weight yarn. Second, I am fully aware of the fit issues for this tank top. Um, I have seen a lot of people make it and talk about how the underarm, like, depth is really long. Um, and the fit is not super great there, so I have taken that into account. I have done a lot of math and measuring of myself and of other knitted and tank tops in my wardrobe. And I'm basically regrading like <laughs> the whole pattern. Um, so that I hope it'll fit me better. Yeah. So, I know, in case I posted, I've, I've posted about it on Instagram, both of my stories and a photo, and I just got, like, a ton of feedback that was like, be careful with this pattern, be careful with this pattern, the armhole depth, the armhole depth, and <laughs> I was finally just like, guys, thank you. I, I got it. I'm, I'm taking care of it. So please do not feel the need to comment about the fit issues of this pattern because I'm basically regrading the whole thing so that it works for this yarn and that it fits me the way that I want it to fit. Which, um, just as an FYI, I've never done before. <laughs> So, while I am, like, good at math and good with spreadsheets, um, I don't know if I'm good at making things that actually fit my body. And a lot of times, um, even though I do a gauge swatch, and I feel like, like, I did a, this is a pretty big gauge swatch for me, okay? This is, like, it's wide. Okay, I didn't, I didn't do a, it didn't do it long, okay, but it's wide, so it's better than what I normally do, okay? I know some people are still going to come for me in the comments and say, your gauge watch was not nearly big enough, because every time I show a gauge watch, someone says that, um, but yeah, I did the math, I did the measuring, I'm trying to make this fit better. But I've never done it before, so if it turns out wrong, like, it's all on me, and I'm going to be fine with that. But basically, I've cast on, this is the back, back piece, and I've done, like, ten rows, so <laughs> there's not really much to show you, um, but... I did have to frog already once, so this is my second attempt at casting on. And, um, we're just gonna go with it and see what happens. So, um, the other thing that I want to say is that I am actually filming my whole process of knitting this. Um, it's gonna be a one, maybe, either one full video or a two-part video, um, of me knitting this and then also wearing it because I'm knitting this for... Uh, a camping trip that we're going on at the end of July. So I've only got like three weeks to knit this. Um, so first, you know, first we'll see if it, if I can get it done in the amount of time that I want. And then second, we'll see if it fits. 
<laughs> I'm a little worried, but I did knit this whole sweater in three weeks, although it was worsted weight. But this is fingering weight, and it's just a tank top, so I think I can do it. I think I can do it. So that's what we've got going on here in my whip land. I do think I do think I'm kind of funny in that if you've been watching like, you know, all of my other podcast episodes, I think for a while I've been saying that I'm going to knit the poppy tee next with this um purple purple yarn right here. That's the Kilborn Woolens Mojave base. Um, and when I finally finished my cathedral pullover and I was like, I had that cast on buzz, um, that like didn't even cross my mind. And I was like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to cast on a tank top like right now, like right, right now. So I feel like that always happens to me where I say I'm going to do something for like a long period of time and then when it comes time to actually do it, I pick something else. I don't know if you're the same, but <laughs> that's why I always say, you know, I fully reserve the right to change my mind at any time because I'm constantly changing my mind. So that's that. Um, the last thing that I need to show you and then I do have a couple like news items that I need to talk about is I did get a little acquisition. Um, I saw someone was de-stashing some yarn and I purchased some and I'm really excited about it. I got six-ish, seven-ish. It's six plus, this is like 80-90% of a full skein. So about seven skeins of this um, Explorer Knits and Fibers uh, in the colorway Fresh Balsam on her Carlsbad Worsted Base, which is a 100% Superwash Merino 4-ply, 218 yards per 100 grams. And it's really, really pretty, you guys. I've just, it's just been sitting on my yarn cabinet, um, and I, like, look over at it every day, and it's just really pretty. Um, I really like these like blues and greens and I think I'm going to make a cardigan with this. I'm thinking about the Cal cardigan. Um, I don't know what her name is but her Instagram is at perfectly knotted um, and I think that would be really nice. It's like a classic cardigan and it would really let the variegation like shine through and I think it would be really cute. So yeah that's my thought and yes i know i know this is like seven more skeins added to my overflowing stash um but i really love this colorway so worth it worth it we're getting rid of the guilt of having a large amount of yarn in our stash library collections and Remember, we're curating our own personal yarn shops with yarn that we absolutely love. So, that's what we've got here. Okay. That's, um, that's all the knitting stuff that I have to show you. I have a couple things that I need to, I have a couple things that I want to tell you about. So, I have three things that are, like, news I guess. Number one, um, I am an affiliate ambassador, I think that's the term, an ambassador for Twice Sheared Sheep, which is a knitting and crochet notions company. Um, I feel like I talk about them all the time. I show their products all the time. They're well known for these row counters. Um, as well as they've got a bunch of other tools, stitch markers, you know, tape measures, sock rulers, all these other tools that they sell. Anyways, 
Their advent box is now on sale for pre-order. Um, so I will have my affiliate link in the description box down below if you're interested in purchasing that. And there's a $25 off code, which is advent25. Um, which can get you $25 off your box if you're interested in purchasing one. Second thing that I want to talk to you about is about mood living. So I did a giveaway on Instagram. I don't even think I really mentioned it on here at all. The giveaway is done. It's closed. The winner has been chosen. Um, and it was for this bag, which is the Arendal project bag. But Mood Living has um, given me a discount code that I can share with all of you. If you would like 10% off your purchase from the Mood store, um, you can use this discount code for 10% off. So again, the link and the code will be down in the description box down below if you would like to shop. Um, this is one of my favorite bags right now. It's just a really nice, like leather bag it's got different strap options it fits a lot of stuff in here although there's only one ball of yarn in here right now but it fits a lot and the other piece i wanted to show you is i have their stockholm needle case and i've been using this for my interchangeable chowgu needle tips for a while now and i really love it so those are two of my recommendations. They've got so many different project bags and like organization items. Um, so definitely check them out if you're interested. And the third thing that I want to talk to you about is actually a pattern release. So my friend Kim over at Indigo Knits just released a pattern and it's called the Helix Raglan. And it's a really simple design with a cable raglan increase section. Um, and the cable kind of looks like a helix, like a DNA double helix type thing, which is why it's called the helix raglan um, and I just wanted to give Kim and this new pattern a shout out it is knit up in a sport or a DK weight um, so really nice for fall and winter and um, Kim kindly gifted me with like an early copy of the pattern and unfortunately I wasn't able to cast it on yet, but I am really looking forward to casting this on eventually. I think I'm going to use one of my um, DK pink yarns over here for it, and I'm really excited. So the pattern is live um, on Ravelry. Again, I'll have a link down in the description box down below. Um, even if you go favorite it on Ravelry, if you use Ravelry, or purchase a copy, I know Kim would greatly appreciate it. So, that's it. That's all the Knit California news for today. I felt like a news broadcaster going through all of that. <laughs> um, but let's see. Okay, next week's video, I think I'm going to do... Um, a pattern roundup which I've never really done a pattern roundup before but last week I had asked if you had any suggestions for patterns that were similar to the ranunculus and thank you so much to those of you who suggested some patterns I've got some really good um, patterns that have been suggested to me so I'm gonna comb through all of these and put together a little list of patterns that are similar to the ranunculus so I think that is what is going to be coming out next week so so yeah that's it that's everything for today um, thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it I hope you got some time in to knit or whatever you were doing if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button it really helps me out and I will see you on the next one bye <laughs>